It's Henry again. So as I indicated in my reconnect video, we have changed the RV from the Seabreeze, which I uh, we had for eight years, <clears throat> spent 367 nights in it. Uh, and uh, in many ways, it was a wonderful RV. Uh, it was made by National RV in 1999. And it was their top of the line unit at the time. <clears throat> and the main issues with that vehicle was that halfway through its phase, the second owner uh, apparently got ill and couldn't take possession of the vehicle sat on a dealer lot for three years. And it's been my experience that most dealers just leave things until they need them. Then they go try and make it work again. So, so the jacks got rusty. There was rust in the, in a lot of the compartments. Uh, we had intrusions of vermin and so forth and all that. <clears throat> no, I didn't know that when I bought it, of course. Uh, and now the next fellow owned it. He put it on his, he used it for a number of years going back and forth in Florida. And then he put, sold it from his driveway, which is where we bought it. And um, so these maintenance issues that I'm talking about that came up that I had to put a lot of money into were not really, uh, didn't really happen on the watch of the person sold me the RV and he used the features that, you know, mattered to him. <clears throat> um, but I had to, uh, I had to do a fair bit on that vehicle uh, to bring it up. And you, you learn things about that uh, along the way. So this, uh, when we made the change, because the uh, Seabreeze had, uh, the left wall had sagged a bit and I had to prop it up or was going to squish the slide. Uh, and we had some electrical problems and, and all the rest of it. Uh, it just seemed that it was time to, uh, to make a change. And my wife, you know, pushed for that, thankfully, and she, we were able to make an arrangement. So we bought a 2018 uh, Georgetown. Uh, it's a GT5 31 uh, L5 floor plan. And it has some excellent features in it. Uh, and really been very good to us. Uh, the uh, vehicle is the same length, 35 feet long. It's slightly taller, uh, but not enough that it matters one way or the other. Uh, I think 13, I think it's 12, six or something. And, you know, with maybe three or four inches taller, but it's not a lot taller anyway. But the wonderful part of it is, is that it's, it was not only a 2018 model, but it was actually built in March of 2018. So, a lot of model years, of course, are built six or seven months before the year that they suggest. So this vehicle is a, a later build of that year. And so even here in, you know, October of 22, this vehicle is only four and a half years old. So it, that's really nice. And um, currently we only got 23,000 K on it. So this thing is, is still pretty shiny. And uh, that's really been nice for me. Because again, I've been working on RVs for so many years that were... Uh, tired and rusty and having to deal with you know those types of problems we really got old after a while and the chance to fix any of that would have taken some doing uh, i can do electrical and wood things and like that but i'm not a welder and so that does make it i have to go find somebody who can do that for me if i'm stuck on those kinds of things anyhow and um so this rv is uh uh, what got us into uh, our situation now we've had it for a year and three months or so uh, and like I said it does very well so I'm gonna first I'll talk a little bit about the parts that I'm not going to show and I can't really show in the video so the first question is how's the fuel mileage compared to the old one I'm going to say it's not much different I was hoping it would be better um, we have a 2018 Ford V10 engine and uh, a six-speed transmission in this thing compared to a four-speed transmission and the original v10 generation one back in 99 so i was hoping uh that we do a little better now the uh, this the rv is about two or three thousand pounds heavier than the seabree so that you know is part of the math obviously um but nevertheless uh, i would say when the, the engine's warm and we drive responsibly, we're getting three and a half, maybe 3.6 kilometers per liter. So, um, I don't know. I think that's still eight or nine miles per gallon US. I, I don't have it in front of me. But nevertheless, uh, I was hoping it would do a little better than that. But that's, that's how it goes. And of course, the gas prices in our recent situation have uh, gone up very, very much. And so that's a challenge. 
And uh, so that was something we just have to game out. It's like anything else, whether your 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 vacations are flying somewhere or whatever, you know, the prices change and that often has to force some things. And also because the RV has such a low amount of mileage on it, I'm kind of reluctant to run it um, over long distances um, to driving it out west or something like that for thousands of kilometers where most of what you're doing is just driving. I, I don't know. Uh, if I want to do that, I can have a lot more nights of camping and experience in driving maybe three or four thousand a year at the most instead of doing that in a week. So I will see what happens, but that's sort of the mathematics right now. Um, I love the ride in this vehicle. Uh, with Seabreeze, when we bought it, uh, the shocks were had had it, and so I had to have those replaced, and that did help. But she was still very sensitive to jarring. Uh, so when you went over a uh, thing that there's a, a real type of jarring and it was pretty significant and we were always worried that we were going to break something in the vehicle because uh, it, it was really shake it. Um, and um, this vehicle is so much better with the ride. It really is. And I'm very pleased uh, about that. So that's certainly a really nice feature. Uh, and that's certainly an upgrade. Now there's a more ride upgrade of the chassis. Now I haven't really been able to figure out exactly what they did. But whatever has been done is good. And given that this is a gas uh, RV, gas type RV, you know, that is, it's certainly there's no air ride. You know, so all that fancy stuff is, doesn't exist. So we're sitting on leaf springs and shocks and whatever else they've done, but it's still way better than anything that I've driven in the past. So I'm pretty pleased uh, with the ride. Um, and like I said, the, one of the nicest things is everything works. So we can... I think the only thing I found that doesn't work is the water heater, the electric phase. I seem it's probably corroded or something. I don't. I will never use it anyway, so I don't really care. Um, but other than that, it's just been amazing. And uh, so I want to uh, take you around here and show you uh, the vehicle. So we'll start. We'll start with the driving area. Here on the left side, we have first the leveling jacks, and that system, the auto level, works pretty well. Sometimes I have to do it myself, but pretty good. Um, then we have the basic controls here for lighting. Uh, you have some accent lights and you know mirror heat and all that stuff, and it all works pretty well. And then I uh, I mount uh, my phone on the window just beside the shade there when I'm driving, so I can have hands-free communication. The standard uh, Ford dash. And on the top you see is a scan gauge too, which gives me uh, coolant temperature and transmission fluid temperature. I don't get quite as much information uh, from this vehicle as I did from the Seabreeze. It's just whatever reason Ford doesn't transmit some of it anymore. But it works pretty well. Uh, you have your cruise control on the steering wheel, which also works fine. And I transferred my airspeed indicator into the... Uh, uh, Georgetown. This is uh, from an ultralight airplane and we have a rubber hose which you can see here. It goes down through the firewall and out the front of the rad. Uh, so that's the ram air that comes into and, and it works pretty nicely and you can certainly see if you have a headwind of course your airspeed will be higher and so on. Then I've got uh, this uh, disc and I have a tab a mount for my tablet which I use Google Maps on which works really nicely. And the back a camera, uh, there should have been a phone arrangement, but this thing just doesn't have the technology to do Bluetooth, unfortunately. And then I have sound controls, heater controls, all the usual stuff. And here we have the cigarette lighter and the USB, and somehow the power doesn't work on those, and I haven't figured it out yet. Moving over here to the navigator station, we have a 12-volt and a U USB port. That does work. It works very nicely. And... This table pulls out uh, those uh, ceramic plates on top are just from the sink. The table folds out, but it's a little bit high. So I also got a lap table for this, which seems to work pretty nicely. And then there's a drink holder here as well. I also have in the driving area, we have an auxiliary light here, which I can also use. And we have a number of uh, hooks that can be removed if necessary. <clears throat> there's also a bed that can drop down uh, at night if you have a guest. And to do that, I have to remove the hooks, but I almost never use the bed, so 
The hooks are way more important when you come in from a trip and you're wet from sweat or whatever. The front blind is uh, motorized. It is also used as a sun visor. That works pretty really well. Uh, and then the side ones are hand driven, but again, they work just fine. Uh, one of these things in an RV I find for Kleenex and so forth is these pop tissue things. I put them upside down here, there, and the other place. It just keeps stuff off the tables since you have such a limited table space. It's pretty nice. Uh, now this table, or sorry, this uh, navigator chair does not have uh, any uh, features. Uh, you can rotate it, but you cannot move it back and forth. You can rotate and you can recline. That's all you're allowed to do with that one. Whereas the driver's seat is electric. So you can move it back and forth electrically and tilt it a little bit and so on. Uh, these seats are pretty nice. Uh, I sit pretty well on them. I think the Seabreeze seats were more comfortable just in the sense of how you feel after, say, four hours of driving. you got a small pedestal table in the middle, uh, which is also helpful when we're driving and small wastebasket and so forth. I think that's it for the front. So if we look here at the kitchen, uh, you have, of course, a double sink. And I would really, I certainly would not want a large single sink in an RV because you don't need a lot of water. You don't want to waste water. And to have one sink to wash things in and one sink to rinse things in is really good. Uh, this is a nice, uh, uh, you've got the extension here on this, and uh, it's got the fine spray, and of course, and that works all very nicely. And then uh, all the windows in this RV are tilting, so there's no uh, sliding windows. So we've got those, and those are all tilt windows, as are the ones beside the table here. What I find is, is that they don't open enough that getting ventilation in here on a warm day is troublesome. In addition, the fan in the kitchen is just simply a vent. There's no real fan here, and that's just not good enough. So uh, it's too bad they didn't put a fantastic fan in here because you really need one. So I bought one, and that's what's one of my spring improvements is going to be, is to install the fantastic fan here. The uh, <clears throat> We have the microwave here. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a convection oven as well. Um, we have the propane oven, and I think these things are completely useless and, and really almost a bit dangerous, so I really have won't use it. <clears throat> but the stovetop's terrific, and we have a three-burner uh, stovetop here that um, uh, works just fine. So that's certainly uh, worth... So we just need to... So we use the oven to store things in. Then you have your drawers and a cupboard under the sink and so forth. I installed two new 12-volt uh, outlets here because when I'm boondocking, for example, I wanted, I don't want to use my inverter all the time. So when I'm boondocking, I don't want to use the uh, inverter all the time uh, because it's inefficient. And I've got chargers that you can buy off uh, Amazon or whatever that can charge your computer uh, directly from 12 volts, which makes sense. And so, uh, so it's about uh, almost, maybe just a little more than half the power that it would normally take. So that works really nicely. So having the 12 volts here, and I've got 12 volt extension cords, and you can run things here and there is great. The other thing I've done is underneath, uh, let me switch back again here. Uh, underneath the cabinet over the uh, uh, sofa, we have two USB outports. So the two USBs I'm going to use a lot are going to be mini B and C. So I put two three meter cords on there and then you can sit wherever and you can always grab one of these uh, cords if you want to charge something and it's really quite nice. So let's do first, okay here's the um, this remarkable refrigerator in this RV is not an 8, not a 12, but an 18 cubic foot uh, refrigerator freezer and this is gas and electric so this is just an absolutely amazing thing to have in here and the width across here if I sit on the couch and look across this thing is almost three feet wide it, it's really a residential in size uh, it's pretty amazing and 
the uh, fridge and freezer you open it up you've got you know a very nice freezer and you can go in behind here there's no separate compartments like you get with a 12 cubic foot uh, i run this on propane uh, and it takes a long time for it to run out on electric uh, this thing will take about 700 watts of power so if i'm running down the road i generally so if I'm running down the road, I generally don't like to uh, have my propane on just in case. And so I run it through the inverter while I'm driving. And, uh, and then the engine, along with the solar and the batteries, uh, keeps the thing going. And uh, like I say, it takes about 700 watts of power. But uh, that way, when we go down the road, we're, uh, there's, the gas is shut off altogether. And we have uh, the, um, the fridge running that way. And it works very nicely. And uh, with the lithium batteries, uh, which I'll talk about in another video, the um, I can probably get uh, five hours on the fridge, I guess, maybe a little more before it starts becoming a problem. So the point is, if you are RVing somewhere and you pull into a mall or or somewhere, and you got to go in for you know shopping or you decide to go out for dinner or whatever it is. You can leave all this just sitting here. It doesn't matter, and and it'll keep it just fine. So so that's our kitchen. Just to the just to the right here of the uh, fridge is the pantry, and this is five drawers. There's three on the top here, and they're nicely made. Uh, and this is one of those things in this RV is there's these dichotomies because this is actually pretty nice cabinetry in all fairness and they come all the way out none of that three-quarter stuff you can put a fair bit in these uh, and then and good floors in them and then in other parts the cabinetry and woodworking is, is kind of a little bit chintzy so it's hard to say so we've got the two at the bottom uh, then when that opens up there's two drawers there and again three up here moving over to sort of the living room area you have a small cabin on top for tv controls then we've got what probably looks like a 40-inch television. Uh, and then we have the electric fireplace. And this thing works really nicely. We used it a fair bit last year when we were trying to deal with the winter. Uh, this, these TVs are not smart, though. So they're generally used as an extension monitor uh, in, for the most part. But I have HDMI cables that will extend out, and, and we can do a fair bit of that through computers or whatever. If we go around here... On the wall, you have the thermostat. So these, this vehicle has two um, air conditioner heat pumps, and they are uh, controllable from here and the one in the back. And this is really good. The only thing I'd subtract from this uh, particular um, unit is that the temperature, you're not allowed to set it below 16 Celsius or 64 or something Fahrenheit, whatever it is. So that's unfortunate. Uh, we come around here, and you've got this large um, eight foot long sofa. The uh, chairs at this end and at this end are motorized and will extend out, I'll show you in a minute, and also have heat and will massage as well. So I'm just gonna, you can hear it running and reclining, there it goes. And, uh, sorry, I just don't have the angle. There's the uh, seat all extended. So that's really quite nice to watch the uh, monitor there. And in addition to that, you can pull ahead these center seats. And you have cup holders on them, an armrest, of course. And you can also have power. So this is really quite nice. And this second seat does the same for the seat, this other seat that's powered here. So you've got a lot of um, opportunity here. Unfortunately, this couch does not have a fold out option. So somebody can certainly sleep on it, but it's, they're gonna have to sleep on the couch as is uh, and not have it extended into a bed. Uh, I certainly had naps on it and, and that, that's nice, I guess. We move over here to the dining uh, booth. So we have again the kitchen here and then you come across to the dining booth 
this that's just a folding footstool I've stored there so this table is supported and so there's no post and uh, and then uh, if you want this table can drop down in between here and you can have a bed although I really really don't like doing that um, I made a post for the table if for say when I didn't have it set up properly but if you get it right up high and you make sure your holders in place it does does a very nice job and you've got the small light over the table it's, it's a nice it sits very nicely there and then we have two storages underneath but there's no drawers so unfortunately like Seabreeze where we had drawers in them uh, that was really nice this is not this is limited uh, this storage on this side here is not as deep probably because of the propane attachments or something uh, and this one is uh, significantly more so but nevertheless it's there and appreciated there's also a little bit of whimsy here there's the lighting that you get underneath the couch and for the drink holder and if you push the button on the other one you get that one to light up as well so I don't know but anyhow So we come to the waste here, the RV. So on the right, I'm going to stop this and switch to the wider view just to make it easier to shoot this stuff. So I'm back again with the wider view. So when you come uh, out of the living room here and come into the waste, this is probably two to so feet wide. It's a good size. You have the standard shower. And it's got a seat in it. I, I wouldn't thank you for the seat. I think I'd probably prefer just to have a shower, but it works pretty well. Uh, I put a, 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 a Oxygenics Fury shower. This is on the ground because when we drive, we never have the shower just in case it falls. But three doors. There's a bad design here. Unfortunately, the wall uh, comes out in front of the shower. But if you move the doors to the other side, uh, you can get into the shower quite well. Uh, now, I'm pretty tall, so... This height here is a little bit low for me, but you know, again, you're in an RV, so you have to put up with a little bit of frustration, I guess. And then we have a, quite a nice bathroom here. Uh, it goes a bit on an angle. You can sit there uh, very comfortably with lots of space, not so cramped as I remember. Uh, here we do have a fan with a, a small exhaust fan on it. It actually does work fairly well. I was thinking of putting, making it a fantastic fan too, but I don't think I really need to. And then uh, we have the uh, cupboard here behind. It's actually got a bit of an angle to it. So there's a fair amount of stuff you can put in there. You also have the uh, vanity lighting, which is, uh, I don't use a lot if you're boondocking because it takes a lot of power. Uh, and the sink, of course. And then you've got a utility cabinet in underneath as well. But it really does. It works pretty well. And it's pretty nice in here. And then I have some extra holders for towels. Uh, in addition to the towel rack that comes with the with the bathroom. This RV is a two slide RV. So we have, let's do it out here. So we'll leave it in the uh, fisheye view. So from here to here, and I think it's 14 feet is the main slide. And then we have in the bedroom, we have the smaller slide you can see here framed which is allows for a king size bed. This is a, almost a full king. Uh, it's within an inch or two, and it may, it really does make it um, a real pleasure. Uh, I'm a fairly big fella, and it certainly gives us some space to to get a good night's sleep here. Uh, I really like the small windows on both sides here that you can have a lookout and when you wake up, <clears throat> and then you've got a place on the top here which is quite deep for blankets and all that kind of thing. I've put pop tissues here and racks for my bits and pieces um, when I go to bed, which is really quite nice. <clears throat> we have a hall closet here uh, that's with hangers in it uh, that works. And that's the drying rack for clothes and the mat for the shower and so on. Then we have uh, five drawers on this side and two under the bed. Now, I'm quite pleased with these drawers. They come all the way out. None of that three-quarter stuff, which is really quite nice. 
and the only thing I found was the bottoms weren't well attached. I had to pull them off individually and reattach them, but you know, that's not the end of the world. Another TV in the bedroom. Once again, this is a little smaller. I'm going to estimate uh, maybe 32 inches and a very cool uh, cabinet uh, behind it to store whatever you want. So that's really nice. Uh, and you don't immediately think it's there, but certainly a good way to uh, to store things. And then a decision that, you know, it's hard to say whether it's the right thing to do. Um, we put in a washer dryer uh, because we we're going to be living in the RV and we did use it a fair bit. Uh, I think this unit does the washing really well. I'm quite pleased with it. The drying, what happens because it's a non-vented dryer, um, it does certainly help. Uh, it'll make them from being soaking wet, kind of, to damp, but they're not dry as you would imagine. Now, for me, I use a lot of um, performance fibers for hiking and things like that, and so those things don't absorb a lot of water. And so when we're done, they're almost dry anyway. And using that white rack you saw in the last closet, I can stand it up in the room somewhere here, and in a half an hour or whatever, they're dry. Uh, on the other hand, things that are heavier, cotton and so forth, that's a bit more of a challenge for drying purposes. We have two auxiliary tables on top that we can set up and move around, and those are wonderful, uh, especially even just having one of them set up when we're here is really quite nice as well. So that's the uh, inside of the uh, Georgetown. And like I said, the biggest lament right now is it's uh, near the end of October and up here, all the campgrounds are closed and I'm not gonna get to do this much for another five or six months. And that's, you know, kind of sad, right? So, okay, let's go have a quick look outside and then we'll wrap this up. So one of the things that I've always wanted to do was to be able to boondock and use the sun instead of the generators and always be plugged in somewhere. I just find it really interesting. And so that's what I've done with my RV to the extent that I can. And here's the system on the roof here. So the, I have eight 100 watt panels and I can, connected them in parallel so each pair this pair here and this one and this one are pairs and then those two at the back and these two and so <clears throat> if there's shade uh, it only affects the pairs at a time which is quite nice I run the power down through the refrigerator it took a little bit of fooling around to snake it down, but we got it <clears throat> got it done. It works great. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> the only thing else that you'll see up here uh, is the the uh, WeBoost antenna, which we got to improve our uh, cell strength uh, when we're here in uh, in parks, and uh, it works pretty well. Certainly adequate for what we want to do. So I'm showing this in uh, um, 0.5x just so I can get everything framed in. So that's the front of it. Uh, it's a pretty RV. I love the colors. Really enjoy uh, the vehicle. And uh, we'll just have a quick look around the side here. The uh, See the large slide? And these are deep. Uh, it's almost 36 inches. So there's a lot of, of effect in the room when you bring it out. There's a gross weight of 20,500 pounds plus a towing of 5,000. So if you're a bit responsible, uh, you can keep it within what we call our G license here in Ontario. Big large awning that is motorized and will come out. Uh, it does not have a wind sensor. And with the current um, uh, structures of these things, it's higher than I'd like it sometimes, but it still works very nicely. There's the back slide you can see there. And... Let's just go around here. 
before we just do the basic tour, before we look at what's in the compartments. So there's the, the back of the RV and the ladder goes up. The ladder is kind of on the limit of whether or not someone my weight and size should be climbing it, but uh, it's the only way up to, to check things. Okay, so let's have a look at these compartments. Uh, generally speaking, I like to keep the side compartments on the, the user side for day to day and then, you know, put the other storage on the other side service stuff. However, you have to live with some of it. So the first compartment, R1 if you will, is my battery compartment. And this has current of the lead acids in it because it's winter time and my solar system here, which I'll talk about in more detail in another video. And that's the hydraulic jacking system. So that's sort of your utility compartment. It's reasonably roomy, so I'm kind of satisfied with that. <clears throat> we have the uh, outdoor television. Uh, it's a 40 inch, uh, no rack on it, it's just straight on. Uh, and you can direct the sound through it if you want. I generally just put a computer on a table, run an HDMI and show whatever we're showing that way. This is the output of the furnace. I think it's 35,000 BTU. Um, it has ducts at either end, but nothing in the middle, which is kind of dumb. So, uh, I, you know, I don't know uh, why that was done. The, um, <clears throat> this is the second compartment I use for my barbecue. And uh, one of the things I'm going to be doing, hopefully next spring, is uh, putting in a new inverter. And so that's going to go underneath all this, and this will be packed higher. Uh, but that will allow access to all the systems on the batteries this is the refrigerator um, vent and the other chimney is on the on the roof of the rv this is uh access to the fresh water uh, pump and so forth through those black ports and then i just have my some of my equipment and so forth the uh noodle pool noodles they use those to clamp on the slides to prevent uh and i'll show one here if you, these slide flanges are pretty easy to miss. And if you hit them with your head, you're going to know about it, or you, maybe you won't know about it. So if you slide the noodle on there like that, it gives people like me who are always in a hurry, a fighting chance. If you are, were to walk into one of those, especially when it's dark. And then we have the hot water heater. Uh, it's a six gallon, um, does more than enough for whatever I've, we've had showers and stuff and none of us have ever run out of water. So I don't know, but it works great. I know there's a bit of sediment in it, so I'm going to have to clean it out, but that's okay. This is uh, just an access port to the plumbing of the heater so you can run the bypass. So there's really no storage there at all. This uh, <clears throat> is a storage unit here. I have my wood here. Uh, to put under the jack pads. So this spreads out the weight if you're on someone's driveway. So what I bought was a two by 12. It had it cut in a number of lengths, uh, but they do curl and split, but you can glue them together and it works fine. And then if you get three quarter inch plywood as well, you'll find that these are exactly half the thickness of a two by 12. So this allows me to do one and a half, for example, if I'm trying to figure it out. So one of the things you can do a lot of these RVs, the front jacks are uh, ganged together and go down and up together. But if you're trying to level it and it won't cooperate, you could put some wood under one of the jacks but not the other and it'll equalize. And that's been really effective. And here we have the propane outlet and you can run your barbecue from that. The only thing is, this is after the regulator, so you have to get just a, <coughs> a single valve that will operate your barbecue. So if you want to use the barbecue with a, um, a tank, you have to put the regular back, back on again or it's going to get uh, way too much pressure. <clears throat> so here's the um, <clears throat> interior of this large storage here. So we have a significant amount of long storage over the gas tank <clears throat> area and then a quite a deep and high storage here under the bed for all kinds of bits and pieces. And it's quite remarkable what you can put in here. <clears throat> and again, most of the stuff we carry isn't that heavy. It's just big. 
On the left side, we have the electrical cabinet. I'm hoping to put in some wooden <clears throat> framing this year and maybe a reel of some kind or other to make this a way more effectively used compartment than it is. <clears throat> we don't drink the water from our fresh water tank. <clears throat> we probably can, but we don't. So we bring jugs and we put them in here uh, and um, we have a uh, 10 liter jug in the RV we use to fill our glasses and then we fill that with the jugs in here. We carry about I don't know, 40 to 50 liters of uh, fresh water. This is the gas tank. <clears throat> and this is the wet bay. <clears throat> now, one of the examples I was telling you about, these panels are incredibly flimsy. And you, when you're putting pressure on to connect a, uh, <clears throat> a top, you might always you might break it. So I'm going to buttress that a little bit next year, make it a little better. But other than that, it works fine. One of the things that's cool is the filter is actually uh, in line. Uh, so when you winterize the RV, the filter's winterized. So it's kind of neat. What I found with these <clears throat> um, ports is that uh, I, I like to use my quick connects <clears throat> to save screwing hoses all the time, especially in the cold weather and so on. So that's what I've got. I use Gardena once. There's other kinds, of course. So you put this one into the port and then this on the back and it has a cap on the end and that caps it. Uh, my hose that I use are female on both ends. So that way I can put a male <clears throat> on the spigot and I can put a, um, I have a male here, so it's just snap, snap, and I connect my hoses no matter what temperature. This is the uh, <clears throat> dump valve area here, and you undo this, rotate this down, and then connect your hoses from there. This is the uh, outdoor tap I mentioned. Uh, this is broken, <clears throat> but I never use it, so for now we're not gonna bother. Now, the other <clears throat> compartments here I put I can put uh, stuff or tools in these two. <clears throat> They're just empty right now. This is the generator compartment, and this is a uh, an Onan 5500 watt um, gas generator. <clears throat> so there it is there, and I just uh, one of the things I just can't understand. I changed the oil in this thing. A few days ago and it was probably original oil i'll never understand people who spend all this money in an rv and can't maintain it properly <clears throat> and the propane tank we have 19 us gallons which you of course can only fill to 80 percent uh, and this is like i said an auto propane fitting so you have to you can't get this filled at say canadian tire or something like that you have to go to a place that does what they call auto propane and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the tour of of our new RV. And like I said, I think we did fine. And it seems to be working very well, which is the best part of this whole situation. I never expected to... Uh, it would have been nice to do things a little different um, and choose some things differently. But in all honesty, this is a really been a very fine compromise and it gives me a chance to enjoy the type of RVing that we actually like to do. If it was any bigger, you get into, getting into different licensing requirements here in Ontario, it's expensive and complicated and if you lose your medical, you lose the ability to drive your RV. So, you know, there's all kinds of balances. Anyhow, thanks again for watching and uh, we'll see you later.